there a second? A second. Favor? Aye. Aye. That was easy. <laughs> You're in. That's not a <laughs> Okay, the first order of business. Um, we got to appoint two alternates to fill uh, two vacancies. So, two standing alternates will fill the two vacancies okay. because we're a little shorthanded tonight. The record can show that. Um, the next will be uh, approval of the minutes for July 1st, 2013. No comments. No, no comments. Okay, we'll let the record reflect that there is no comments for the uh, minutes of the meeting. The, meeting, the minutes are accepted? Yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Do you have to motion that? Uh, uh, no. Right. Okay, um, I guess the first item on the consent item is application 13-40 of Darcy Roy. National Sign Corporation, agent for Sovereign Bank, owners for a sign permit for Santander on the property located at 741 Hot Meadow Street. What we have for them, Jerry, is that the, um, the, the signs that are proposed are essentially uh, exact replacements for the ones that are there. We worked very hard with them in the beginning to uh, make sure that they were replacements for existing signs because of the historic building and so on. They agreed to that. That's why it's on the consent agenda. There were no issues with regard to regulations. Accept the application. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Good motion. My Will Fisk. Okay. Yeah, I second. Okay, the second item, uh, application number 13 41. Courtney, pardon me if I mess this up, Frebriello. A Metro Beach restaurant, agent for Simsbury 1820 house, owner for a sign permit for Metro Beach restaurant on a property located at 731 Hot Meadow Street. This one, Jerry, is a um, Metro B relocated from right. across the street to the 1820 house. What they did was they replaced, there were two hanging signs mm -hmm. below the 1820 house sign. The sign that they replaced it with is a, basically the same size and simply says the name Metro Beach. It's already up. It's already up? Yeah. Basically, I talked to the chairman when that came in and asked if he wanted it to go through the design review process. Because it's the same size, same area, and so on, it's the same existing sign, we didn't think that was necessary. So that's why it's on the consent agenda. That's good. And that's in the packet here. Oh, yeah. <coughs> Any discussion? No. The sign's already up. So. And will we accept the application? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, we'll open the public hearing section. Application 13 38 of Mark Levesque. Oh, that, this. this one actually is going to be continued to your next meeting. I indicated to the applicant and his attorney that the commission, the full commission, would not be here tonight. They would need four votes to get this approved, and I think that they, I suggested to them that they wait until the full commission was there in case somebody decided they didn't like it or they did like it, whatever and they agreed to that. So that'll be on your October 7th uh, meeting. Mm -hmm. I believe it was some correspondence that came from this attorney too as well, right? That's correct. Yeah. Right. We have it in writing that they asked, agreed to that extension. Okay, so the record will show that that's going to be continued October 7th. Right there. Yeah. Okay, we'll move on to the next application, application number 13-42. We're using it at Sandsmark, agent for Rocco and LRG. Andrew Zini, trustee owner for special exception pursuant to Article 7, Section 1.4b of the Sensory Zoning Regulation to allow the operation of an antique and estate auction business on the property located at 17 Herman Drive. So what do we have here? Just by way of explanation, Mr. Chairman, the, um, you have in front of you tonight two, two maps, also a series of photographs. The maps show the the layout of the Herman Drive area where this building is located. The second one below that shows the specific lot and the parking layouts um, that we had in our file from the previous approval. Number 17, the end of the cul de sac, directly from oh, right. the cul de sac. There's yep. a little background for you. Uh, Rich Career, uh, commercial real estate broker. Uh, the other tenants in the building, reliable plumbers on 17A, which is the furthest side to the east. Local color is also on the east side, 17B. 
Uh, Louise has proposed for 17C, which is still on the east side. Then there's a divider where there's trees and grass. And to the right, we have the landscape company, uh, Briggs Landscaping. They're in Unit 17 D and E, and Trans Power is in Unit 17 F. Can you spell it? Sure. C O R E I A. Can you please, sir, um, show us on this map where we're, where we're talking about as far as the building that, that the tenant is the building that we're talking about? Yeah, this is how you build the whole thing. Uh, yeah, she's looking right here. Yeah. So they're, they're right there. Business would be right there. It's right here. Okay. okay. Here's the, here's the subtle island with this, the grass and the trees. Okay. Let's go look at the design. Is there a printing service on this building? That would be, yes, yeah, yeah, local color. color. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, local color. That's, yeah. that's right. Yeah. 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 Are there, are there um, parking spaces that are assigned to each business, or is it more flexible than that? It's more flexible. Okay. Now, yeah, but this is all tape. Because of the speak up. Okay, sorry. Yeah. yeah, it's more flexible than that. We have, you know, the designated spaces here. We have some pre mark spaces over here. There's room here, but where nobody usually is parking. Then you have the cul-de-sac and you have the street down here. And one of the reasons I do, if she has her auction, uh, it would be like occasionally, it's not an every night thing. It would be like the tenant before this was uh, jazzercise, and they used to have a lot of people every day. And her business is a lot of it's over the internet. Uh, and then an occasional auction, and she would propose to do it off hours when when any other other tenants would be at least affected. It could be any time. You prefer to do it in the evenings. I would do it or, in the or Sunday. Or Sunday. Okay. And what kind of uh, we're talking about parking? Like what kind of capacity do you think you're going to need? And you can't predict who's going to show up. Right. You have to have some kind of an idea. I'm anticipating 50 to 75 people at the most. Okay. Right. And a lot of people come, you know, together, okay. couples. And when were those primarily be on again? Pardon me? What time would that primarily be on? Primarily Sundays or evenings. Now how will that affect the other businesses? What, what are their normal hours of operation? Good. Yeah, may I? Uh, Pradeep, I judge. Um, <laughs> Gotta go over there, please. Okay, yes, of course. <laughs> New to this. <laughs> Hi, my name is Pradeep Bajaj. I own Local Color Inc. I'm in 17B. Can you spell your last name? B is in book A J A J. Um, I run a printing and direct mail business there. And um, as far as the comment about the parking, it is not quite as flexible. I, I have been promised three spaces outside my door, as is reliable plumbing. He, he said he was going to be here, but he's not. And so that's what the six parking spaces between A and B exist. There isn't any more assigned marked parking spaces there. Uh, and uh, C has three spaces in front of it. And uh, I wish that map could be up somewhere that I could talk about it. But uh, I guess my concern is I work in the evening sometimes, not very frequently. And sometimes, depending on the kind of projects I have or when they're needed, sometimes I'm there in the weekends too. And uh, I don't want to obstruct any new business coming into place, but I'd love to have neighbors. It's quiet there. But I'm concerned about the parking. I have use of the loading dock. Um, B and C, they both have loading docks. Um, I have big trucks come in sometimes for delivery and pickup. I need availability for them to maneuver so that we're not uh, um, hemmed in. Uh, that's my concern. And your delivery times for your trucks are when, at night or during the day? It's all over the time. Not so much in the evening, but there are times like with the political season coming, I'll be working all weekends. Well, you asked about parking too. Yeah. What we can see in this map, there are a total of 20 spots that are numbered spots. And we've got indications that certain of them, the building that's being talked about now is right there. Mm -hmm. the three spots in front of it. And then there's the landscape building and the, and the printing building, which, which are over here. No, the printing is, printing is next to where it's so the it's new here. business is planned. Yeah. I'm, I'm here. 17B. Yeah? That's B is there. OK. Yeah. okay. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
It's here. She, yeah. Mrs. Lansky over here. Correct. Correct. Is there a little uh, island in the middle? Mm -hmm. and and the other spots. These are the spots here, but what's an indicator we don't know about, or These I can't quite spots. tell us. Well, it's right. all paved. Right. Could it be spots? It could be. I would say it could be spots on the individual side here, but not that much closer to here. Because he gets trucked all the time, too. That needs to back up and back. Sure. So it's quite familiar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Probably why they stop there. They can find three going to towards the correct. Mm -hmm. And on Herman Drive, if people park along Herman Drive out to uh, Lordship Boulevard, you'd have uh, 27 on each side of the street. You could. You could. Well, and that's okay to park there. This yeah. isn't yeah. a survey either. Either. So, so, I don't know if yeah. this is yeah. something we can rely on in yeah. terms of parking spaces, but if they're not on here, I wouldn't assume that. They could be counted as parking. These here, no, I don't think yeah. so. But, yeah. Yeah, there was a reason I mean, why you, you can count on people parking yeah. there, yeah. but oh, yeah. they're not designated as <laughs> spots. Uh, uh, My pants are covered in that also? Oh, you'll have to uh, okay. take, make a turn, okay? We can Do I have to register now or just go yeah. the way? Yeah. yeah. Once he's completed, somebody else will come up. So the, so the trucks come in this way back up. Are they box trucks or are they yeah. not? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Do you find that the uh, spaces that you have in front of your business are adequate for people who need to come in and, and visit you that are not box trucks? The, uh, uh, the three spaces delivery. in front of me, there are times when they're not adequate. Mm -hmm. um, I ramp up uh, with manpower based on projects as mm -hmm. I will the next six weeks. And then I get uh, temps come in, and they all come in in cars. So you don't have any designated employee Spots. Those other three than spots in front of me. I don't have any other spots. What do you do with your overflow when you have more? I talk to reliable plumbing and uh, we negotiate and we cooperate. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Who was the tenant before this? Do I know? It was Jazzercise. Oh, so yeah. what did they have for reliable? They have, they had parking all over the place, mm -hmm. and that was a problem. For that was a problem for reliable plumbing. Yeah. You know, so we were thinking that Louisa was a different type of use. We had yoga studios and things like that. And one of the things that Rock had mentioned to me was to uh, make sure that uh, you know whoever the user is, they're not using up the same spots. So we didn't. So we didn't go with the yoga studio. We didn't go with other that type of use because of the jazzercise experience. And we thought that Louisa's use was a more infrequent type of use of having people come there. Yeah, on an occasional to, visit. It seems like you'd have to label it properly so people would know it's a little confusing in there, right? Where yeah. they can go and where they can. Right, correct. And they'll still go where they're yeah. supposed to go. Yeah. Uh, I think another gentleman had a public comment. Just enough to let you come up to the podium and let them know who you are and where you live. I'm Jim Gofford. I own lots uh, number. You know, number 11 on 15 Herman Drive. Can you spell that last name? Uh, G-U-F-E-R-T. Uh, I've s spoken to all the property owners on both sides of this property. Number 9, 10, 11, 12, and 15. And they've, uh, we've all agreed that we request that no special exemption be allowed for on Herman Drive for the operation of an antique and a state auction business. For the reasons due, due to heavy commercial traffic, large trailer trucks, large box trucks of all kinds, and large vehicles like those that move logs and stuff they have down there now, it ties up the street. Herman Drive is very narrow, can't handle more traffic on this road. Large commercial vehicles like tractor trailer trucks need all the full width of the road to back and unload their, their goods. We have a steel truck. People come to our house, we have windows. That, oh, these are big tractor trailers, and they got to back in sometimes. There's no room on the road. When they had that jazz cycle, I must have been on the phone a hundred times trying to get, get them off my lawn, off the street, because they blocked everything up. It was a zoo. And uh, it's going to be a headache right down the road. And all these people I talked to, all the landlords who, who own this property, all agreed that this shouldn't be allowed, and I have their authority to talk for them. And when that jazz was cycled there, it was a mess. But, uh, and you couldn't, you couldn't do anything. They were on the street, on my lawn. And all these people have lawns right around this property. And they all fear the same thing. And they all have tractors coming in day and night. You know, we, there's no, no time like they have the trucks coming in on their property all day and night. There's no parking. There was never parking there in the first place. You can't park on that road. It's impossible. 
I mean, the, 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 where the property, have you, have you people been down to look at the property? I'm familiar with the property. Way back, when it wasn't, clean, the when it wasn't cleaned up like it is now? It was a mess. It's always been that way. It's not been very handy for them. Even the people who live who have the businesses on our property really don't want this. Okay, thank you. I'm the owner of Simsbury Precision. I rent a unit at um, number 11 Herman Drive. And I hear you talking about 27 cars on each side of that street. And I just see the nightmare. I got tractor trailers bringing in raw materials, tractor trailers picking up items that we're shipping or dropping off things. And they have to be able to maneuver in that road and back down into that driveway. That's how they've been doing it for years. And I just see a disaster. If we got cars parked on both sides of that street all the way down. If it was on one side, would that make a difference? Which you... side are you gonna do it on? <laughs> don't do it don't do it on the side that impedes my guys right. from backing into my driveway. On both sides do it on the other side of the street. Both sides have yeah. traffic. You know, really, you know. What if we were to limit it to the weekends? Well, you know, if you're limiting it to the weekends, there's still some deliveries, but you know. <clears throat> most of the most of the work you do is during is during the week. I mean we're there seven All days time, a week right. so yeah. i got out early because i got here today you know? yeah. <laughs> had to come here. but um we have trucks that come six o'clock mm -hmm. at night sometimes for picking up tractor trailers yeah. picking up shipments uh, sometimes they're there six in the morning i just think it might be a My name is David Lakeling, and I rent uh, the unit at the 15 Herman Drive, right next to the 17 building. D E G L I N G. It's Inner Glass Window Systems is my company. We have the same problem. Two days ago, I or three days ago, I had to wait until 6:30 for the trucking company to back this semi trailer in to get a shipment, uh, to get a shipment out. Mm -hmm. So any time, any evening is going to be bad. They do not work on weekends, I do, like everyone here, but uh, it could very well be a problem. Um, and they could, parking on the road doesn't make it, because that road, if you put one line of parked cars, there is then one lane left, mm -hmm. and they're not gonna be able to make the swing into the, uh, into the driveways. It just won't be possible. And I know that to get into ours, they have to back all the way from the street and, the and go in. From the cul-de-sac, they have to back up. Yeah, they, they, from the cul-de-sac, they back in to ours and then back around. So that would be very difficult. And then if it was during the weekdays, it would be a nightmare. Um, and anybody I would have a front row seat of it. <laughs> um, it wouldn't affect me as badly, but the plumber who is not here, um, he would he could very possibly have his vehicle blocked out or in, because he keeps his plumbing truck inside the building. And before it was blocked in because of the jazzer size, he had us an emergency call and he couldn't get it out. So then I would have to listen to him sure. all the time. <laughs> Thank you. A, a question for the, the owners yeah. or the, t the tenants there. Yeah. Do they have to bring an 18-wheeler in there? I mean, I'm sure there's shippers that oh, you they're, can't. They're heavy loads. Yeah. It's all, it's all, it's, it's all yeah, they oh, yeah. yeah. 20 and foot bars of steel okay. and aluminum. All right. Four, 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 uh, I didn't know if it could be done right. with a smaller no. shipment. Well, actually, it's all day long, too. No, it's ATF. Yeah. Basically, all the time. Oh, Even big box there. trucks come in there. If you've got two a car trying to pass one of these trailer trucks on the street, there's no room. Yeah. It's virtually impossible. Okay. <clears throat> my name's my name's Ron Lacandro, L O C A N D R O, and I rent from 15 Herman Drive as well as David does. Um, 
My business does not require large tractor trailers, but it, as my wife alluded to, uh, we see it all the time. Um, we see a lot of the vehicles coming in and out. Um, we see the issues with parking that we have right there within our facility and then even out on the cul-de-sac. To turn around in there, it's not a very large cul-de-sac. The road itself is not very wide. And a lot of times when I'm coming in and out and there's a tractor trailer sitting there, I, I just couldn't imagine cars on either side and a tractor trailer. You can barely get a tractor trailer. You can't get around a tractor trailer on that road. I don't think... I don't know the codes for, for roads, but it's not a normal width road to begin with. And then the issues that we run into with, with getting vehicles around there and, and parking and that kind of stuff. A lot of times, even in the back, um, we don't have ad adequate parking. My fear is, um, similar to what happened in Fly-In, just happened. Everybody tries to find a place to park, you can't find one in the street, where do you go? You go right into our, our facility they go into areas where um, they don't realize they shouldn't be parking. Now these trucks can't get back in there. I know because because I I, I live and work there all the time. I know that you know I can't park there because David won't be able to get his his truck back there. So um, that's my as everybody else. My biggest concern is is the is the volume. Um, and I do come in on the weekend. I would hate to see. You know, somebody park in front of my unit, and I couldn't get in or out. So, um, but, uh, it's definitely an issue. Rich, can the owner do any modific? Is there any way you could do modifications to the site to reconfigure or add parking that won't affect these folks? That's something we'd have to he would have to take a look at. Yeah. Uh, could probably hire a land planner and uh, we look and lay everything out. Uh, the, the other thing I was talking to Louisa, and uh, if you, you know, if all of you, uh, she's willing to, you know, do something on a trial basis, uh, you know, like a six month uh, type of trial, and again, and limit her uh, auction activity to just a, a, a weekend, a Saturday or a Sunday, if that would possibly help. Or even just a Sunday. Or even just a you Sunday. Know, something where it's the absolute. But for, you know, and, it's, and again, it's not every week that she would have it. Where, did you look at any other, um, I'm just out of curiosity, did you look at any other locations that, that were Go ahead. I, I mean, I'm putting my I kind of economic speak. development yep. hat on here, just trying to, I, we all want to promote business in Simsbury. Right. Right. Um, you know, and if most of the other sites were in Avon and Canton and Granby, then, you know, I'm probably more inclined to say, let's maybe not six months, but let's just try and see it. But have you, have you looked at any other? I've looked at sites all in the area mm -hmm. for the last couple of years. Okay. So how big is this? What's the square footage of this? 2,500 square feet, including the office space. And what are the normal business hours going to be? Pardon me? Normal business hours? Monday through Friday? Or I won't Tuesday have any through? set business hours. It'll be by appointment if somebody wants to come. Okay. Or anything. And then when you have an auction. Right. And then I'll have, when I have the auction, I'll have a preview period and then the auction. So you'll have 2,500 square feet, and you don't plan on bringing any of the uh, of your equipment or, or goods outside and, and placing them outside for view? No, no. Okay. Of that 2,500, it's probably, what, 1,500 is actual display area. The rest of it is office, restrooms. Yeah, I'm just curious, you know, if you have 50 or 60 cars out there, you're going to be able to fit everybody inside the, the, the square footage. Yeah, that, that would be yeah, something. That, that would be something limited by the fire marshal. Also, right. we had that discussion with him okay. as to numbers. But, yep. Thank you, sir. Hi, I'm Tim Mitchell. I own Ten Herman Drive, and um, I do agree with the other people here um, in opposing this request and I, they're, they're really right on the mark when it comes to the, the parking the fact the street is small um, and you know we heard I think 75 was the number but what if it's twice that much I mean no one really knows how much it's going to be if you, if you let it in what if it's double that number I, I'm just concerned that it is too much traffic and, and I don't want people parking in my my um, property like uh, another gentleman said, well, they'll just, you know, they don't want to walk way down a worship road. They're just going to park wherever. And if it's maybe some of my tenants aren't there on the evenings and weekends, they'll just go to my property. So I'm, I'm concerned. 
I don't think this is the right business. I, I'm uh, a landlord, so I want to bring in as much business as possible like you guys, just as long as it's the right business. And, but I don't think this is in characteristic with the street, this business. I, just, I really don't feel it's the right fit for the street, as um, you've heard. So I just wanted, as an owner, to express my concern that this is not the right business for this particular area. Thank you. Any if you any eliminate other? parking on the street, then that might solve the problem. Absolutely. If no parking on the right. street, then it solves the problem. That's right. Well, then you have to eliminate it for everybody that has. That's well, right. there's nobody, nobody parking. Park nobody park parks on the street. You can't. Now. You can't get trucks you can't. in. But we don't know in the future what other when other tenants vacate, who else is going to be coming in. So see what I'm saying. It's well, there's a sign on the end of the street for. Uh, one of, one of the side of the street that's got no, no parking up down toward the end. Um, you know, we did the right hand turn going to the Lordship. There's a sign about uh, 20 feet before that. It says no parking. That's the only no parking sign that's on that street currently. I mean, that would solve the problem because nobody yep. would object to that. Yep. Okay, is there anybody, a recommendation, yeah. anybody else? One other little quick concern. You said Saturday preview, Sunday auction. <coughs> If the road filled up on Saturday, we do get mail delivery, and I don't know if that 27 parking spaces were going to infringe on all the mailboxes. There's a lot of mailboxes on that street, and that just might cut down on that number also. Yes. Okay. Any other public discussion on this? No. Okay, I'm going to close the public hearing on this application. So, make a motion to close the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Who seconded it? Yes. Discussion? We could do, we can also postpone this until we get some more information. So I'm a little concerned about the issue with this additional space that he's talking about here that could be used for parking, Hiram. How many cars could go there? Because right. if they were parking in this triangle, sorry for the public, you can't see, but near the building we're talking about, if that was usable, it seems like it would be. Well, it wouldn't be burdening these buildings, it might be burdening these guys, but with a question on whether they're there on mm -hmm. Sunday. Um, that's, a, that's a question. Well, actually, if not, when you go back to that back building, the parking is extremely limited. Like, there's like a Which parking one? trucks back there in, on, on number 17. Number 17, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah. And this is pretty well blocked in and all the big trucks. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of parking. Yeah, that's yeah. Now it looks pretty good. It's cleaned up at the normal. There, there's, no, there's hardly any room for any parking there. Okay. I, I think that I have the owner do an assessment of right. how many everybody has and needs, what is available, what could, you know, a couple different categories. What, you know, what is available, what <coughs> potentially could be made in the parking spots, and what is completely off limits. All right, do we also know what the width of the roadway is? Can we get that information from That's a good point, Jerry. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to suggest to you, too, is if you would make a motion to reopen the hearing so we can gather that information and give it to you at your next meeting, that might be, we'll make a list of things that we would want to see that. Okay. Um, we can't do that if you've closed it. So if you make a motion to reopen it so for the receipt of that information, we could continue to, the, I think, the October 7th meeting. And then we can get that information to you. We'll do it with the road, available parking. I'll talk to the police about the parking up there, too, make sure that's coordinated along with the public works department. We have to do that under the public hearing. We can't do that. You, you, it, 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 once you've closed it, okay. um, I can't give you that anyway. Okay, so I'll make a motion to reopen the public hearing for application number 1342 of Louise Sanders Mark, agent for Rocco V, an LRG tur Chirisani, tr uh, trustee, owners for a special exception pursuant to Article 7. Section I4B, the Sensory Zoning Regulation, to allow for the operation of an antique and estate auction business on the property located at 1700 Drive. And I also find out about Second. making no parking yeah. up and down the street, so that okay. makes solve the yeah. problem. All in favor? Just, just, aye. 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 So, and the purpose for that, um, and as we'll reflect, is that we're wanting, trying to gain the information that everyone talked about and get a good handle on that before the commission decides it. I'll get that to you before your next meeting, and it's going to be available to everybody. So feel free to answer. I highly recommend you know, the owner should be talking with the tenants as well, so we get a kind of cohesive answer. That's correct. And any correspondence that could come in from any of the other owners, I know it appears that most of them are represented here, but yeah. um, I know they said a few were absent. I don't see any of the correspondence. No, but the owners are, I represent them because they gave me permission all the way okay. you know, up to where they have laws on the street. Okay, I appreciate that.
All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to close the public hearing. This will be continue until October 7th. Okay. So we'll get the information together. Okay, the uh, next item on the agenda, um, application 13-37, Thomas J. Daly, P.E. of Malona McBroom, Incorporated Agents for Simsbury Turnpike Realty, LLC, for a site plan amendment on the property located at 15-34, excuse me, 15-39, Albany Turnpike, West Simsbury. Fire? Uh, applicants here to present this. This is a, a part of the proposal that you previously saw for the uh, car wash that was, it's in the process of being rehabilitated, uh, renovated. So I'll just let the applicant go ahead and make the presentation. Uh, for the record, and for, for the commission, my name is Mark Aragoni. I'm not Tom Daly, although he's a partner of mine. Um, I'm a licensed landscape architect in the state of Connecticut, principal at the firm of my own McBroom, who's here representing um, the applicant for Simsbury uh, Turnpike Realty LLC. Um, what we have here is a couple different maps. One of them is just a basically one of the sheets that was included in our application plan set that really highlights. Um, the area of site plan amendment that we're here asking for your consideration on. Some background and history of the, the project. As Hiram mentioned, um, the project was approved, I think, back in 2012, um, site plan application. Um, what was not included in that application was something that I think the owner uh, wishes it could have been, and now it is included, and that's why we're here asking the amendment. And basically, it's a parking driveway and circulation improvement um, that will look to improve the circulation of the Staples Plaza and the curb cut management along 44. Um, historically, DOT had done a corridor study that recommended interconnection um, behind these parcels. Uh, the STC standing permit for this property also recommends um, connection, rear connection of these parcels. So if I can highlight a few things on this map, which is LA1 and it's at a scale of one inch equals 20. Here's the car wash. There's a little more than a 300 square foot addition planned for that car wash. Basically that's enclosing a concrete pad self wash station that's out there now. That's basically an enclosure. There's one right next to it that's enclosed now. Excuse me, 44 across the top here? Yep. Okay, so we're coming in. All right. 44 runs here. Um, you have the car wash, Hartford Credit Union, Subway, Dunkin' Donuts, and then Liquor Depot building okay. headed on in that direction. So if I can highlight one of the main um, improvements for the project is right now there is a little bit of congestion at that intersection. The improvement in circulation for the project is to create a one-way flow through here back out in this direction. In order to do that, this is a proposed rear connection that does not exist. Why well, we put a little color on it so we can explain that to you. Um, previously approved and constructed were the vacuum bays mm -hmm. over here. So the circulation off of 44 would utilize the existing signalized intersection right adjacent from the Hoffman Auto Park complex. 
Um, but flow would be directed in this direction. Car wash users, um, circul circulatory flow around the backside to this new proposed access, which would then run behind the Dunkin' Donuts, behind the existing credit union building, and connect into basically at the corner of the rear of the former Bob's, now Liquor Depot building. Okay. Some other improvements that go along with this now that this access driveway is proposed is to really improve <clears throat> the delivery access to the rear of Dunkin' Donuts and also give some employee parking spaces back there. That's what's highlighted right here. There's also a flip of a few parking spaces out here um, to, this, to this area. So what's rendered on the plan has a little color on it, so it's proposed. What's rendered in green is actually <clears throat> the handling of the reworking of the roadway, the drainage. Mm -hmm. This will be a detention basin. Now there's a bioretention basin um, up in this area and also a little biodepression in this area. But the general um, flow of the water still continues down this direction and then it enters and crosses 44 and existing culvert and goes through the Hoffman Auto Park. It's a little backwards when you're out there, but that's how it flows. Um, let's see, what else can I highlight on this plan? When you come in off of 44, is that, and look at the arrows, that's a two-way? So when you come in, you can go right to the car wash, or you can go straight through and go around the back? Correct, and that's a, that's a good point. So this road right here yeah. um, was originally proposed when we started laying this out at a 22-foot wide roadway. We went not only with Simsbury staff, we met with Simsbury uh, Fire Marshal, we were recommended to go meet with Avon because we're in that area where Avon and Canton and Sinsbury Town Line are. Um, so we met with uh, Avon Fire Emergency Services and Town Planner Steve Kushner over there. This roadway, two-way roadway, went from a 22 to a 24-foot wide roadway, which is how it's proposed in your application. Okay. So yes, two-way circulation, which this will probably be of most help to you. We take a step back, car wash building, and then we have, again, Credit Union, Subway, Dunkin' Donuts, and there's the, the larger building. Right now, that rear access drive with additional parking comes through here and out here. The proposal is to continue that rear access driveway as is recommended in the STC permit now and connect it through to here to a signal. If you know the 44 corridor, that's there a, is no signal. That's a nightmare. There is no signal. So the idea is that rear corridor will really help in the circulation of access to those to those units. Do you, you see it being used as a cut through from uh, West Avon Road to 44 going? Good, good point. Going good west. point. Some other things that are planned. As you can see, it's not a straight shot mm -hmm. through the back there. There's some curves. There's curb cuts. There's parking spaces that are striped. 90 degree access right onto it. The other thing that's being proposed, there is an additional three-way stop behind one of the buildings back there, Staples or wherever it is. Um, there will be a stop here at the back corner of the Liquor Depot and Dunkin' Donuts. There will be another three-way stop proposed on this corner where the flow of the one-way circulation for the car wash will be. So we have two additional stop access mm -hmm. that will be installed as part of that. And but is that I, on town? Is that going to be a town uh, road or is it a private road? It's a private road, right? So there's really no enforcement on those stops. Oh, sure, there is. Is there? Yeah. yeah. So uh, was it ten cars or more? Parking lot with ten cars or more. Any property with ten cars or more, law enforcement can take. Oh, okay. Yep, they can. Good to know. Yeah. I'll make sure and stop the <laughs> Oops. Can you, can you tell me what the difference is between the, the brown uh, rectangles there and, and the rest of the, the road? Yeah, road? these are just um, during construction. We want to have an anti tracking pad, which is just a, oh, a larger stone. And if you're familiar with that area, um, another deterrent is this actually gets utilized, this rear access road, which is good, it gets utilized, mm -hmm. but there's some traffic either going to Puerto Vallarta or in the uh, mm -hmm. Dunkin' Donuts drive through lane. More oft times than not, it's not a real good cut through because there's, yeah. there's people using it. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as the flow from 44 into the car wash and mm -hmm. around, mm -hmm. um, there's that grade area that's going to be covered, kind of a carport area to, for wash your own. 
Is there a way to drive through that area without getting your car washed? In other words, you're in, you want to you want to go around, but how do you get access on the back side of that uh, of the car wash to that road that's being proposed? Derek, yeah, Tun yeah. Tunji Soma with the car wash. Yeah. Um, that's going to be enclosed. Uh, the roof just extended over over that bay, and then yeah. it'll be a detail shop. Okay. So it'll just be for uh, cars that have an appointment <coughs> for a detail. Okay. And what's your name? Tunji Soma, S O M M A. And if I remember correctly, the way to get in there is by a gated access. So if Correct. you get in there, you've already paid to get your car washed. It's not like, oops, I'm back here by accident. That's I right. I want to get my car washed. Okay. So what's going to prevent cars from backing up and blocking that intersection if he gets busy? Because I know the competition he's going to have down the street. They can back him up way out into the Walmart parking lot. I don't exactly know what the queue is, um, but as far as operations, you may want to go into a little bit of detail. But there's a... Um, Pretty significant, and I know you're speaking to Russell Speeders down the road. Yeah, um, we'll go down there in the winter. <laughs> there's a pretty significant um, queuing length down here. I think you also split it into two. We did, and we can we can hold two cars, or uh, in the two lanes, we can hold up to four or five cars just in that uh, without spilling out over the the island. Um, and that's and we're talking about every two minutes, we'll be able to let cars. So we're going to have four to five cars in this area right here. Uh, and then once you've paid, the gate opens, and then that will allow you to queue over to here so we can hold another four to five cars. So we're probably able to hold in queue 10 cars um, for just two minutes mm -hmm. uh, because it would be every two minutes a car would go through. Mm -hmm. um, the touchless wash over here um, will have uh, this. Uh, yeah. This queue line, and again, that's a, that's a four-minute uh, total time between in and out. See, because here, 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 here's my problem. We we discussed the traffic issue before, and we talked about moving the cars through your line. This was before this road was going to go through, but we always knew this road would go through in the future. Mm -hmm. And now we're talking about, and I can just see the holiday season, a lot of people cutting through from West Avon Road. They're going to cut through because they can't get through that big intersection at 44 at Simsbury and, Ava, and um, Avon. They're going to be coming through here, and now it's going to be after a winter storm. We're going to have cars stacking out on the Route 44. And then we're going to have people trying to pull out at the light, even though they have the green light. There's going to be people trying to get in, people trying to get out. So. My big concern now is we've got this new roadway, which is going to be, let's face it, it's going to handle some traffic, I think, um, when, once people learn the route. And then we're going to have the possibility of car stacking at the car wash. So my concern is, are you going to be able to move the cars and not get the stacking problem Russell Spears, uh, Spears has? Because he said the same thing. I sat at that meeting in Avon, and they were saying how they can move one car a minute if they have to. And but. Have you been there in the winter? And you can see they can stack them up. Mm -hmm. So that's my only concern is right at that, that, that choke point there, right at that intersection where your driveway meets the new roadway going out onto the state road. I think that we can be a little bit more efficient because all of our wash equipment will be mechanized and, uh, you know, where we time it so that uh, we can have just in the tunnel, six cars just in that tunnel all being washed or various phases of being washed. Um, and uh, and even for the, uh, the you know the touchless wash, assuming that the longest wash is, is just uh, four minutes, and that's out the door dry from the, the moment you go in to the moment you leave, um, all of that is, is mechanized and, it, and it's designed to be as efficient and as quick as, as possible to provide you with that that type of service. And you remember how it was before. Yeah. But that was with, you know, an 18-year-old kid. And the one know, lane. Was taken yeah, the one lane. I mean, mm -hmm. it backed up a little bit. I, I see this being a, a much more efficient manner of getting of traffic through. Oh, I think his car wash will be. I'm just concerned yeah. now we're combining it with the new traffic flow that could be. Go ahead, Ron. Uh, excess cars backed up. Is that going to have any effect on those bays for the vacuum cleaners there? I, I, I can't really judge it by... The map there, but if you let's say you had more than two rows of five, and now you're backed up through there, what kind of an effect does that have on those bays? Uh, this is 
up to here is almost 70 feet. Okay. Um, so I, I think you know if, you, if, a, if a parking lot or a parking spot is 20 feet, um, I think we should be able to. And that's that was kind of why we moved it over and put yeah, in the two lanes to try and absorb as much as we possibly can. Yeah. And then as soon as you get your receipt, your gate opens, which allows you to queue into here. And now oh. that'll help uh, eliminate that bottleneck. We didn't want to have we didn't want to get a bottleneck with people having to pay and. It, much of it's going to be automated too. So um, most people uh, that have a membership and a, an RFID reader, a, a little like Easy Pass pass tag, yeah. like is, you drive in, it'll recognize you. Know, you press a button, you get your receipt, and <coughs> so our model for the car wash overall is efficiency and, and more of a a modern, you know, a fast pace. Okay. What about people who want to get their car wash that are coming from the West Avon side? How do they gain access to your queue? They would, strike, correct me if I'm wrong, but they would utilize this new road and come in this direction. Right. So you're going to have people coming off of 44, making a right-hand turn, and potentially people making a left-hand turn into the same line. This signal, yeah, this would be signal controlled. Right. So you would have the op, there would be a potential for a car coming here. Right having to make weight and take a left-hand turn, um, not uncommon to a lot of other areas, similar to people who use Dunkin' Donuts or Petco coming from West Avon Road, uh, mm -hmm. Port of Vallarta, mm -hmm. that they come in that back way. Mm -hmm. um, there's our, there are right-hand turn lanes, and once you get in there, there's left-hand turns. It's gonna function as a rear access, but it's within a parking, mm -hmm. a parking area for a, for a shop. If you have someone coming off 44 who's not going to the car wash, but it's doing the cut through, but you got the guy coming this way, taking the left to go into the car wash, that seems to be a little bit of a choke point, I would think. Well, it's just so close to the right, I'm sorry, can I, am I, am I, am I, right, so if I'm, if I'm cutting through here, so I'm going to get my car wash, I've got a series of cars That's coming in here, so I'm going this way, so I'm going that way. I'm just wondering if you got enough space to, to react there. Yeah, I, I would worry if it were a left-hand turn coming off of 44, but because it's right, right, it's a right-hand turn and a right-hand turn. I mean, we can't plan for that, you know, uh, seven o'clock Christmas Eve with a snowstorm where there's going to be traffic. Sure. Um, but because it's a right and a right, that's almost a free, a free movement. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, we can't plan for every, every aspect or every holiday, but much better than it being a left-hand turn. Then I think it probably wouldn't work. Um, Hiram, were there any traffic counts done in this, or any? There, there were no counts that I'm aware of, Jerry. We did we did ask that they coordinate with uh, Avon, and they do have a, 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 notice, a notification from Steve Kushner that that they had no uh, no pro no comment. Looks fine. I guess I had a couple of questions um, for the applicant, if I could. Indicated that met with um, folks in Avon, and was it the fire marshals that required the increase in the width of the road? I believe it was. Um, I, was. I mean, it's obviously going to be a significant road. There's no mm -hmm. question about that. I had a couple of couple of questions, and, and I do think that the, until people get used to it, it, it it's going to be confusing. Um, when people come around this area here, um, if they get in here and they didn't, hadn't planned to, you know, they think they're going to go up here, I'm not sure how this would work. Is, it, is this actually a raised island here that they, does this occur? It, it is. So, so, they're, so they're either going to have to go through it at that point or, or figure out how to get over the curve and out of here. So I think that's an important place there. So you may only have a sign that says, you know, exit this way or something, or car wash that way or something. The other thing I had a suggestion, maybe is this is, and this has bothered me since the beginning, is that I'm not sure, I think as somebody brought up too, the length of the queues here could be increased by straightening this line out a little bit and getting more uh, more room in here. Uh, if you can't do that, I need to, I'd like to know why. But it seems to me that the shape of this, this island is, is important. And if you can get two lanes in there, because I do think that if you get two lanes and they're stacked in there, you get them stacked up to here, someone's going to try to back out. And yeah. if you can provide a bit more room for them to get over toward the building as opposed to where the vacuums are, uh, it might be uh, a help. So that was just a There's, just, there's a telephone pole right here. Um, we, yeah, right it could be that we could move it over. We had it here so that the radius to get into the tunnel is the easiest for 
somebody, I, I think they modeled it with a, an F-350 long bed crew cab mm -hmm. with, with hitch. Right. Um, so it can easily be driven by a little old gate. You know. I, I mean, I could see even, for example, sliding these, these gates down a little bit here and but then widening this out. Yeah, but that, then that affects that. the radius. I, well, I, I wouldn't change the radius. I, I mean, just moving this to here. Another still, car length even. You're still going to have another, the, the, the radius is not going to change. I wouldn't change that. But just, and I, I would leave that to your engineer. But I think I think the concerns with regard to stacking, especially stacking on 44, mm -hmm. if that ever becomes an issue, um, it, it'll be an issue for everyone. You know, and certainly we don't want anyone to get hurt, but we, we don't want the, the commission to approve something that's not uh, going to work either. So. I, I just think you, you would be concerned with people backing out of those, oh, sure. you know, and banging in the cars. That's not good for the business either, so. I just see a thing was there. You know, that might be, uh, that, that's another They're lane. backing into an exit lane. You guys understand there's a dedicated lane there. That they're not well, that, backing into uh, the, they're not backing the queuing lane. No, no, no. My, my next question was, what's the distance between the yeah. the, the, the parking stripes and... This is 22 feet and, between the, the back of the, the furthest point of the end of the uh, parking lane. Yeah. Or parking spot. Yeah. Um, to the lane. Right. How many feet? 22? 22. And then there's and, a barrier? And there's No, parking, there's no barrier. Parking stripes. Uh, there'll, be stripe par line. there'll be parking stripes. Parking stripes everything. are usually 15 to 18 feet. Well, here, here's the layout. These are angled parking spaces. Mm -hmm. So an angled parking space, whether it's 60 or 30, they're actually at 23 foot depth because of the okay. angles of yep. the rectangular shape of a the car. Then you have a 22 foot lane. Now you could actually have, you can get away with 18, 19, 20 foot if you have one-way angle parking. That's a pretty substantial lane of 22 feet. Now, what we were mentioning before is this lane in here, which is roughly 70, probably a little bit more than 70 feet, where the split happens here, where you now have two lanes, this is just dedicated for queuing. Right. Um, and the reason that the fire marshal um, looked at it was this is a pretty important mm -hmm. to keep. So we have 22 feet here to is allow for backup. Um, this would be a striped line okay. right here. Um, this would all be curved. Yeah. The internal would all be curved. Can I pull in? I see the queue and I changed my mind. I'm driving between the queue lane and the people backing out of those spots. Is that correct? The way I would look at that? In through here. In the 22 foot yeah. lane. I mean, I would think, equate it to West Hartford, where, uh, what is it, LaSalle, where they have the pull-off one way, or it's not even at South Main Street, I believe, where you pull in, and then they have the little driveway that you can pull off in front of, and they have angled parking. You may have to stop, wait for a car to back out, and continue on your yeah. way. It's, it's one of those things that I think uh, Hiram was right, and it, it'll take a week or so to get used to. Um, but the overall functionality and why STC pushed for this roadway in the first place was the overall endpoint will relieve some of the traffic mm -hmm. stress. Well, I think this roadway has been in the works for 15, 20 years, Hiram, because I remember when I worked in Avon hmm. and they were redoing the Abdows and they put that road in, they showed an eventual connection on the other side. So. Um, but this is just, you know, it's a little bit in the mix. Um, you know, I agree with Hiram. I'd like to see maybe a slight change in the queuing and where the wash station, pay station is um, for stacking reasons. Um, because I am concerned, as are the other commission members, as far as people getting in there and then having to back out or how many we can stack there. Um, I, I don't know. I just can see that being a potential issue. But I would suggest, and, and I, I don't know what your time frame is, but I'm sure it's as soon as possible, but what I would suggest is that uh, if the engineer can, can do as much as they possibly can and show us what a typical stacking diagram would look like, give that information. It's just PDF me that information, whatever, on the site plan so that the commission can get that and feel comfortable. I mean, I'd be happy to draft something for your next meeting in terms of a series of things that you want to see going forward. You know, a diagram that shows the actual vehicle stack. I mean, just to give us a you know scenario of what you think would be an average day there. And if we can make a tweak to a radius, or if we can right. you know slide it forward yeah. by a couple feet and maybe doubling that where your fingers are now, making that so it's two lanes for a long, for a long period. time. Yeah. 
this that allows maybe two or three more cars to be able to be stacked there. I was there recently, but I don't recall. What is that point? What, what, what is that? that this is, right here? Yeah, it's, I, 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 it's driving me nuts. I don't know what it is. Carlos, okay. you don't remember what that is, do you? I think it's a light pole. Oh, it's the, uh, the, the tension line for the pole. Yeah, it's the, it's the guy tension pole. rod for the telephone pole. Oh, uh, okay. So that might might be the pens are usually yeah. installed at the angle point. Yeah, yeah. That's something for the utility company. So I guess my hunch is there's a reason why that. Yeah, that angle point. they never know. <laughs> and, and one other question: the the driveway going out, the new roadway going out to the state road. How many turn lanes is that? It's one coming in, and is there a left straight turn lane, and then a right turn lane only, or is it just a straight left and a right turn? Yeah. A so straight, a straight left, a left, and a right, and a right. Correct. So there's in, there's a straight and left, and then a right. Okay. Uh, how far down the road do we, we care for Simsbury? I don't know where the lines are there behind Dunkin' Donuts. So we, because I have a question about the Dunkin' Donuts site, because I know when you go through the drive-through, yeah. you've got to go to the back, move yeah. around. Yeah. Is that going to infringe? Where is the road going to yeah, infringe on that? Basically, the next time you go through there, and you're not going to use it as a cut through. <laughs> well, that's you, that was my if you come concern. from West Avon Road, um, you'll take a right right on the corner of Liquor Depot. Yeah. This road will continue straight in front of so you. You can't cut in there and then zip into the Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah, and if, right. you, if you just follow my hand here, this is the existing road. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. There is the existing parking lot. There's a couple parking spaces right here for yep. Dunkin' Donuts. Yep. We will we will come right through basically the last parking space and the grass that's out there. Okay. So the movement into Dunkin' Donuts will be very similar to, to how it is now. Mm -hmm. You would come in here and you would come around there. Okay. But you don't have a, you don't have anything showing movement in this direction here. You, you, you've got this coming this way, but it, isn't it possible to go in here and go this way? Um, I, I, mean, I would think so. Yeah, no, you well, could do that. Now, right? yeah. yeah, you could do that yeah. now. Yeah. I mean, it's circuitous, so I right. think that yeah. going through is probably not going to be real convenient. It's right. a pain in that. No, it, it is. It's, it's yeah, not, I tell not you, Dunkin' Donuts takes care of the cut through most of the times. Mm -hmm. that people are using it, that it would be a problem. When is Dunkin' Donuts backed up? It's in the morning. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's, it's not not easy to get through there. Yeah. So tell me one other thing. The bank there, is it going to be able to exit out onto this new roadway from the back? If somebody comes in off of 44, are they going to be able to get from the front? Part? Currently, no. And Unless that, you go through the drive-through, um, the bank will function exactly how the bank functions yeah. now. Right. Um, it does have a connection into the front of Dunkin' Donuts. So they'd have to go all the way across to get out. They would have to go all the way across. Is there any possibility of giving them access to the roadway so they don't have to exit back out onto 44? Currently, due to lease agreement purposes, um, the the owner of the property does not have rights to hmm. create an access there. Really? So is that curved? It's curved. Yeah, it's, like, it's curved. You know what I'm saying, Harry? It would be great to, you know, we have entrance, but it would be great to get everybody to exit out of the light. Absolutely. I think that we is. We met with the bank CEO today. There's no interest. Hmm. I think the owner, his future, would love to. Would, would love to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would think. Um, like, you had mentioned well, something about maybe a yield sign or a stop sign up near, yeah, if yeah. you're coming in from the West Avon side to make a left into getting a car wash. Um, I think I think that would be important, some sort of direction, because uh, I'm concerned about how close that, that turn is to the turn coming in off of 44. Mm -hmm. Well, there's going to be a you, stop sign here. Right, um, so further up at the top. So yep, having right there. a yield sign. Something to that. Yeah. Or how about, can they, is there two lanes there so they can stop before they go into the car wash area? Is that going to jam everything up for the straight left turn? Yeah. Come on. All right, Carlos Ruiz, project engineer with Maryland Mayfield. Um, this act, one way access was proposed to us by STC and recommended that we perform this one way. Um, through the site, mm -hmm. um, so they actually ran through this um, on them, on themselves uh, these turning maneuvers and and uh, backing up uh, situations for that intersection there. Um, this is why actually you see this kind of dog leg here. Uh, that was something that SCC had us put in because they wanted us to make sure that we actually force people to understand this is one way, this is not two way. 
Um, there's detailing stations here. Uh, again, they have to back up, and they're uh, con uh, they have this barrier here. So that way they'll back up into one way traffic approaching into the car wash. So that's a barrier. That dog leg. Looking this is a curve. It's, curve. Curve. it's, it's, it's curve. a little hard for us yeah. to say yeah. this distance, yeah, right. but all right. So again, we're forcing everybody into this site, and if you make the wrong turn, there's there's ways that you can get around that. Yeah, here, here it's the dog leg. Mm -hmm. so as Carlos was saying, this was part of the approval, the approval for the seat. Mm -hmm. Because that's how we're going to get you open. So. Right. And yeah, really so that's yeah, the yeah, issue. The issue is that 44 is up here all the way out. Yeah, that's point. that's a good correct. point. It's yeah. tough to see so when you're correct. Road, it's, 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 it's not like you're coming right, right in, in here. Right. Right. Yeah, so yeah, that's what I was. A right turn lane. Yep. Straight and left. Straight and left. Okay. So you'll have that time. Yeah. yeah. You have that much more space. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was looking like it was 44 right uh, yeah, here, it's not easy up to here. Get. So, uh, yeah, okay. There's a, quite a gap there. Yeah. And again, it's a signalized intersection, so if you guys are worried about queuing up, the intersection is going to stop itself. It's going to relieve congestion, and then you got that new spread of cars coming mm -hmm. through. Well, it's a right turn on red there. I mean, maybe with the, you know, you you could just continually flowing in, yep. yeah. which, which you know, maybe look for some sort of no turn on red type situation there. So the other thing is I think you need to put a, like we're talking the exit sign and make it pretty apparent that when somebody wants to get out of there, they know to go here and not here. And yeah, you got people back, back and back out of here and the cars coming that way. Right. That's going to be a problem. Or having to wait until this guy's done waxing his car to get out. There shouldn't be, <laughs> there really shouldn't be a lot of traffic. This is yeah. really a no. slip for Yeah. Almost. Well, this is this is free vacuum service, which I think a lot of people take advantage of. So when you come out of here, you come out and you do the loop again, is that right? You must, yes. You have to loop again. Okay. That's something STC wanted us to make oh, sure we yeah. Wait, say that again? Okay. You when you come out of your car wash, yeah. what happens now is you can come back and yeah. jump right mm -hmm. in here. Yeah. What's going to happen now is... You must go left and loop go back again. Back oh, out to the okay. signalized. That was probably the main point of the STC application is mm -hmm. people... Mm -hmm. Oh now. yeah, that'll be a horror show. So these, yes. yeah. well, that's what happens. Yeah, has that's, happened what, that's what we're before. Yeah, and okay. I think so, to Aaron, so Hiram's point, that's why it's important, Hiram, right. to get that go back in your stacking car. straightened out because if everybody's got to yeah. go around again, right? And that's, mm -hmm. a, that's good for the business. Force them back into the vacuums. Oh yeah, go back yeah. in your car. Yeah, you should put a reminder sign there. <laughs> but then you're going to have crossing trap, crossing traffic. Out uh, and new people coming in. Yeah. Yep. But I think, as, as was mentioned, the timing allows for a little bit of separation. Um, how they go through, you know, it won't be a constant flow out right. well, as they go you, you from station to station. But you to station. can't time the people coming in this way. That's that's the key. I mean, so you're coming this, out here, you're trying to right. get the heck if out that of stacks Dodge up, you can't exit. your car more because the well, dryers didn't get it all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah what, what's, if they're stacking, how are you going to get the cars back out? I believe they're stacking. Tanji, am I correct in that there's going to be an employee there at the uh, detailing area, which will help with Hiram? Yeah. If they're stacking, they have to go around. How do they get out? Yeah. Well, that, that's one of the things we're just talking about is that the, the thing that we're talking about tonight is, uh, is the colored portion of this map here. Okay. The coming in. Previously, when we looked at this, I know that, I mean, and I'm just as much to blame as anybody else. But this area here was looked at before, and the commission already said okay. I think what we're seeing here is how this road uh, impacts or doesn't impact how this site actually functions now. So that's the connection, I think. I guess one of the questions I had was, is it, there's not going to be any right turn on red here, I assume. I don't have it. We can double check on that. We're actually going exiting out of the parking lot. We're actually going to, actually going to ST, once we get approved from this commission, actually, we have to go to um, OSTA and have our, our permit, I guess, revalidated through them. So those kind of comments, they're actually going to be addressing them for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I mean, you'll be looking at vertical alignments and so on. Absolutely. Right? Sight lines, again, yeah. don't have to go over that. I, I would just think that coming, it's just my own opinion, and I don't belong to OSTA, but coming out of there, I would think it's going to be pretty tricky if you have a right turn on right there, you want to be really careful. Um, I guess the, the point that the applicant was just making to me is that <coughs> this, this alignment was previously approved before. I still have the, the same concern, and I don't think if, if it's possible to move this line, I don't think that should be any big deal. And so I, I would just simply say that if the commission does decide to go ahead and approve this, I don't think it's this road here that's giving us 
the object. I think it, it's basically how the site functions in re, in relationship to the road that's proposed here. That's really the issue. I agree. So, well, and, and it would just be like maybe a peak, a, a peak time too. I mean, we're talking about being able to, to staff currently as it is 10, 10 to 12 cars, um, big, big SUVs too, um, that are moving through at a, you know, every two minutes. Um, so I... Hiram, just to, to your point a second ago, as, as the site stands right now, people are able to would be able to exit the car wash and go right up to the light mm -hmm. That's correct. and make a right. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that it works without the road. The road adds complexity to the site because now you're crossing traffic. You've got people coming out of the car wash having to cross traffic with people queuing. Now, there could be a point where you're queued out past the berm there, that little and you can't even get out because you just washed your car and there's a line of cars waiting to get into the car wash. That only happens with that new road. As it stands right now, it, it should work fine because you've got the right turn right in front of you. You don't have to go, you don't have to take the okay. circuitous loop. Yeah, I, I, I agree, Derek. I think, I think what we're really looking at here is a compromise that the DOT has actually sort of suggested that, that this would be a good thing to do to get them all come out come out to the signal. And I but I do agree with, with what you said. So I think that and I'm sure that So I think we were okay in approving the, the site yeah, as yeah. It, as it was. Yeah. The fact that this road is is designed this way I think is problematic. To the business. If you can't go wider you know, you have the, you have the, the bank's land on the right there. What I'm thinking is, if you had three lanes, no, you couldn't do that. I'm trying to think of how you have a, a dedicated lane for the people that are in the loop, so they're not clogging up the people who want to go through that and go straight or left. You got to cross them. You know, I, th right. I think but, that... Am I uh, making sense? We, we analyze this at the length of the STC. Yeah. 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 There is not enough room on this site to okay. get that many lanes. When, when you look at... <laughs> yeah, when you look so at... When you're looking at this, you're looking at this road servicing the entire center. Yeah. The car wash parcel is part of the center that runs from Avon to Simsbury. So the real question well, that, the, that the STC and that the, has had with respect to that center is there is no exit going west on 44 to signalize intersection currently. Mm -hmm. This is the only one that exists. Mm -hmm. So in terms of everyone that's using that center, not just the car wash parcel, yeah. this is the best option to get a left-hand turn on the Route 44 coming yeah. out of our center. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and there really isn't another yeah. one. Yeah. Can, can you, like from Dunkin' Donuts. Exactly, right. you can't you get, couldn't do that. Yeah, A lot of accidents, the police chiefs all want it, the State Traffic Commission wants it, and yeah. we have the opportunity to do it now, and that's why we're here trying yeah. to do it. Okay. So the applicant said that they, they're going to go back to DOT and talk to them about reauthorizing, or? Right, we, we can't go back to the new OSTA, which was the former SDC, until we get a decision um, on the application from local. But here's, here's my, what I was getting to. The, uh, on 44, is there going to be a left turn lane? Is there going to be uh, there is a dedicated a, left turn lane? There is. There, light there is currently. No, there is not. There is a left turn lane. There is. A designated, designated left, left turn, turn lane. There is no arrow, Pay, but there's a designated left turn lane. So two, two straight and yeah. straight and right. Yeah. There's a, once you're you like pulling into Hoffman, there is yeah. a dedicated left turn lane. In that yeah. Yeah. No, but I mean, there's not a dedicated left turn lane in your complex. There's not but there's a left turn lane that takes but in, in, Into your complex? Yeah, into the, on the, on the car wash. There's no protected left turn from the signal, but there's a turn off lane. Yeah. I think that helps. They could add an arrow to the light. Yeah. That might control a little of your flow. I, I suspect that they won't add the arrow to the light. No, no, they want us to add the arrow to the light. Yeah. <laughs> Just my guess. They might have done that already. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, but I, that dedicated left turn lane comes back to um, almost the middle of the bank. Yeah, the middle of the bank. Yeah. And it, how, it actually, how is it striped? It, is it is it yellow? Yeah, no, white. And it's, it's got it's a, a dotted a line. Straight, no solid. It, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's got an arrow. Well, I think it's right when you, if you were to take that left into Dunkin' Donuts that. That's just past that. That's, that's, where past that's, that's, where that's why it makes it hard when you're coming out, coming eastbound. Really, yeah, it, it gets, or you're trying to pull in there, going westbound. It's hard. Exactly. Yeah. That's that's tough. That's a tough spot where that left turn starts. There. All right. 
Uh, I would just suggest this, and I think I think this is a compromise that'll work for everyone. Is that, that if the commission should decide to approve this this road this evening, that we the commission get um, information with regard to what the stacking is on the site, and and the engineer should try to maximize the stacking and send that to us as a follow up to whatever action you decide to take. I think that's a reasonable request and mm -hmm. won't stop anything, doesn't hold anybody up, but I think the commission should feel comfortable that what it's approving is going to work. It, it's going to work for everybody, I'm sure. And the applicant says, well, there's not going to be a traffic problem, but frankly, I'm, he's probably thinking, I hope there's a traffic problem. <laughs> right. Where, where's the Avon and Simsbury line? Uh, behind the Petco. Show, yeah. Petco there? Right between Petco and Staples. Okay. Here. Yep. And then Simsbury Canton. Simsbury Avon. Okay. So, and you talk to the police department in Simsbury? And Avon. And Because Simsbury is going to have most of the jurisdiction over the, oh, that's all the hairy area. That's all there. Yeah. Yeah. The last thing I kind of have is uh, in, in terms of you're okay with regard to the sewer flows? Talk to the WPCA and sewer? Yeah, I, I believe we did, and we can definitely confirm that. Um, but again, we were focusing with just this at this point. And this whole yeah. thing catches this way. Yeah, I mean, Towards if you want, the, for as far as stormwater, if you want it detailed, it's not just Carlos would be willing to bring you through it if you want to know where the water goes, but. Not too worried about, <laughs> as long as it's, you know, adequate. I, what about landscaping around the detention areas? You have it green there, but what exactly uh, you plan on putting there? Um, let's see if it's It's all grass. Yeah, it's all grass. Yeah. Just for maintenance purposes. Is it? Of course, snow removal, especially. Um, there's a, there's just a, a leak off. It's all curbless there, and there's a gravel strip adjacent okay. to the road. Um, yep. Right. Okay. It's all sheet flow. It's all sheet mm -hmm. flow, absolutely. Hi, and we actually have a net um, zero increase to um, Tunji, right, right there, the, the pipe that outlets to the catch basin uh, to the east. east. Yes. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So the, right. the, the flow that will flow into our existing system uh, if exactly. it needs to, but it's not scheduled to need to. The little, uh, <laughs> wetlands to the south here. Um, so there's zero net increase to um, Avon. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that was the point that we made. And this is just a raised inlet here, is that how that works? Correct. Yep. Yeah. There's a filter burn there. Again, another added water quality um, benefit. It'll filter through there. Then it goes to the raised, um, great overflow structure. And then that'll that'll discharge into this location. We have another bio depression over in this location. All this is curbless, so that way it can go sheet flow into there, kind of rest. Everything settles out, and then it discharges into that again. So the detention is actually some planting of grasses. Correct. And this this will have lawn on it and be irrigated as well. So, Hiram, just go over what are we asking for um, a stacking plan yeah, for the parking lot for the, the car wash? If the commission decides to approve it, I suggest that the uh, applicant's engineer provide a, a stacking plan showing how much stacking can be provided on site. And if the plans don't specify, I would just also say, too, that the detention uh, basins, biodepressions and detention basins, just show some grasses specific specify some grasses being planted on that, just so it doesn't turn into a riprap, you know, right. hole. Okay. Just so it should look uh, nice and green. Okay. Um, and I think that's probably all that. I'd also like to see the added signage for the exit to make it clear that people know how to get in and out of their egress to the property if they decide, um, like was brought up, that they don't get trapped in that left-hand turn here. They know that they can get in and out. It's got to be pretty apparent to people because I can see when it's busy. Especially now that we know that the cars have to re recirculate back mm -hmm. around through. Mm -hmm. um, we just don't want to see people going around and around and around. <laughs> stuck well, stuck yeah, in the boat. I'd like to see the signage up by that berm as well. Yeah. That's key right there. Right, so added signage for on site circulation. Right. Okay. The other thing I would just request too, it does nothing the applicant has to do, but that we be sort of copied when you go through the OSDA process just so we have an idea what's, what's okay. 
Tom will definitely keep you in the loop on how that goes. But I think what we can do is just we'll we'll add the queuing of the actual car. You'll have the little cars on there, and I think we'll we'll double check the signage that we have. Maybe just highlight the signs that are proposed. For, for, for signage, I know currently we have one way and do not enter signs there. Are you guys looking for um, something more specific? Yeah, I think we're looking for we something have up choice. here. Yeah. And I think here you probably need something mm -hmm. showing one, one way is an exit and one way is to, to the end. Uh, I don't know, even call this, is this a detail bay or what? Yeah. yeah. Do they have to come back to us for signage? We, I mean, we can do it. It's, it's on site, signage. So if, you, if the commission trusts me, I'll take a look at that. Mm -hmm. right. As a whole? <laughs> 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 You're all right. Sorry. Are we satisfied? Yeah. Any discussion? A couple of as it's proposed. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll make a motion. We approve uh, the applicant's plan of thirteen dash thirty-seven. I'll second. With those, with those three items, is with the three. I, oh, excuse me. With this higher state uh, a stacking plan uh, from the applicant's engineer, uh, retention basin and bio retention basin planting grasses, and added signage for on site circulation. Will they have to come back to us with that? Yeah, I don't recommend it. It's necessary. I mean, I, I each of the signs will be. I would say minimum, relatively, you know, small. It's going to be signs a key across the street with big yellow arches on the, this way. <laughs> <laughs> really, it'll be in keeping what we approved at the last. Correct. Group, so. Exactly. We'd really only be looking for. I mean, I think here. Yeah. Here. Right. Right. And I have to submit the site plan to OSTA anyway. Mm -hmm. So that revision again, we're give, keeping you guys in the loop. You'll see that revision come through the record. Okay. All in favor. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. You gotta get a big billboard because you just passed. <laughs> <laughs> or you gotta have someone take your speeders down across the street. street from you. <laughs> <laughs> Was the owner of the no. car wash? No, the little, and he's the lead, the tenant, the leasee of the car wash. Yeah, and then that's the engineering firm that the plaza hired. To put the why, didn't, why didn't we have any? Well, it's a pri because it's a private road. Well, you said it though. Until you have to do the double loop, that's what causes the real problems. And he's stacking double loop. These guys can't move. No one that's can move. I, I can't becomes, believe that we, we approved that. It, just, it doesn't make any well, sense. Well, no, before, but this is before it, 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 it has the, the road wasn't solely included. Do, right. Solely to do with the tenant that is there now. That's right. That's how we approved but it. But when we approved the first, that road, that what road wasn't going to be there. So they weren't going to break. They weren't going to be doing that's that's my, to the right. You didn't have to loop point. again. Yeah. That's my point. But that's why we. I mean. I don't feel bad that we approved it because I think no, based approved, on what we approved oh, at that lab, time. No, well, that was right? my point. Yeah. I mean, it's it's nobody's fault. We, as of right, as it was, it was fine. Yeah. But now you had this road in, and it becomes an issue. You can't go out to forty-four. That's why you have to be careful when you approve things because down the road you don't know what's going to happen. Well, no. You, you know? what you do but is you, you get to it, think it, about it. Yeah. Well, no. Well, it was approved. That this road no longer works. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> at the end of the day, it doesn't. <laughs> Okay, the next item on the agenda, um, item number two, discussion of potential zone text change in Terraville B1 and B2 zones for regulations RE bakeries. Hiram? Yeah, the, um, you may know that up in Terraville, I think it's 30 to 32 Winter Street, there was a convenience store that was approved by the commission a while ago. And for whatever reason, the convenience store didn't go forward. Right. Had another person come in now who was interested in um, creating a bakery coffee shop in that, in that area. Mm -hmm. It's sort of a quirk of our regulations that we don't allow bakeries in the B1 zone. We do in the B2 zone, which doesn't make a heck of a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. And so my suggestion to you is if you agree, is that I would come back to you next month with a proposal to add, simply add bakeries to the B1 zone to allow that to happen. 
I think it's a type of activity that, number one, wouldn't um, adversely affect the character of the area in any way. And I think it would also provide some additional economic activity mm. in that area, which it, it certainly needed. could use. Oh, it's yeah. just been Absolutely. vacant, that building. They haven't done it. Is it the old package store? Is that? I'm trying yeah. to across yeah. the barbershop, right? Right across yeah. the barbershop. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Now, a while ago, you may recall, we had the, that came in, and when the convenience store discussion was in front of the commission, there was a lot of discussion about parking, and, yes. and that was always an issue. Yeah. I've been working very hard with uh, trying to get the owners to cooperate and, and perhaps share parking some way and work it out. Uh, I'm hopeful that before the, the app application actually comes back to do that there, that they will have some of these issues worked out. The convenience store was approved, so technically I could say, yeah, they have enough parking for the convenience store. Mm -hmm. But I think coffee shops are kind of, people are in, they're out, you know, it's fairly quick, you know, maybe people there half an hour, 20 minutes, whatever. Um, but that, that, and they know that they have to, have to work that out, so I've told them that ahead of time. So You're talking so. to both owners across the street at Roland's, <clears throat> the barbershop, I once had that little, I don't want to call them condos, but they're, our small apartments that have parking in there that I think is underutilized. I know that they've talked with the barbershop. I don't know about the uh, second yeah. one. Okay. So there's anyway. parking in the back. Remember, we had, there was parking. It's not right. paved. There was parking in the back and along the, the dirt side. Line. Yeah, on the side. Yeah. I mean, I think that typically people that work there would probably park there because it's easier to get to. They know where it is, and it wouldn't be as much of a, of a hassle to get from that area to the I think The concern is that it's easier to park across the street in the barbershop parking lot which then robs those patrons of being able to park there. Yeah. They need to decide to work it out yeah. if there can be a benefit to, to both of them. You have a Herman Drive situation. People are going to just park in front of Roland's Barbershop, run and get their coffee, and then take off. Yeah. So you're going to have that situation. So we'll have to, and, and they're aware of it. As I said, I've told them they need, need to cooperate. And when they come to the commission, they have to have that worked out. So. Uh, otherwise, I don't think it'll work. So, yeah. mm -hmm. if it's right. okay with you, then I'll, I'll bring that to you next month about the adding the bakeries to the text, and then we'll see what happens from there. Yeah. Can you can you talk to why they were excluded in the first place? No, I can't, Derek. Like I have use of other tenants or the the zone, like other businesses around it, whether it be with chemicals or you know industrial use. I think it, you know it might have had to do with. Um, and today, I really can't imagine it. Frankly, a big commercial bakery, I could understand that. Something small where people are baking rolls or baking mm -hmm. bread or whatever, I don't think it would adversely affect the area at all. So it's going to be like, you know, you walk in and there'll be a case of pastries. It's not going to be a big... That's my understanding. It will also be a coffee shop. Yeah, yeah. It's not so a very, that's well, that's vision, what, you know, right? It's not a very well, more of an industrial anyway. bakery yeah. as opposed to, uh, you know, mom and pop, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, they talked a little bit about the fact that, well, it's not going to be a Starbucks, but it would be something like that. Mm -hmm. So they would have people coffee, coffee shop. So. so that means people will be sitting there and stopping and having coffee and having something to eat, which means they'll be there for longer. Could be. Which makes parking more of an issue, even yeah. in the convenience store, because you wouldn't stay in the convenience store for any period of time. You go in and buy something and leave. That's right. If you're sitting down and having some coffee and eating something, that's going to take longer. And, and that's why even if it does get back to you at the next minute, I will talk to the realtor tomorrow and say, you know, this is an issue that has to be worked out. And if it's not, it's very unlikely that even if we put this change in the regulations, when you bring this particular site plan in, the right. commission probably would be very hard on it. Well, what defines it as a bakery versus a coffee shop? Well, I think the fact that they, that they do that. They know that they were going to do baking. They wanted to be straightforward and honest coming in. Yeah. So they said, look, we don't want to do something that's not permitted and then get in trouble later on. Okay. So, so what about right down the road where they've got that, I don't know what it's called, but you can go in and my kids go there and they mold clay, but they're, they've mm -hmm. got a kiln on the premises. They're baking clay. Mm -hmm. I don't understand the, 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 what the difference yeah, I right. I mean, eating the clay. Which no, but other than that, the obvious no, thing. But I mean, I mean but you, the same type of uh, things are being like used on the premises, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. But, but. yeah. You have a lot of foot traffic there too. I think is what will think primarily you'll, you'll get a lot of that. I think that whole area is pretty walkable. There's no yeah, question. Yeah, so absolutely. She is on the wrong way of the traffic in the morning, so I don't have to worry about that because yeah. there's no parking on that side of the street. So I think it's going to be the local people. So. Yeah. Right. Unless somebody deliberately turns around and comes back to park or parks in Roland's parking lot. <clears throat> Any more discussion on that item? We have one more. Good. All set. Um, item three, discussion of, of the potential change in uh, zoning in the northern industrial area from I-1 to I-2. This is something actually it's interesting. We earlier talked earlier tonight about uh, the I-1, the Herman Drive area the, you know, is zoned I-1. The minimum lot size in that area is 10 acres. Clearly, 
uh, most of the lots in that area don't come close to conforming to that. But one of the thoughts that I had was to, um, to take a look at that area, maybe perhaps do a little study for you for your next meeting or so, and see whether it would be of any interest to change the zone in those areas to allow, number one, smaller lots that, that already currently exist there. Secondly, if you notice, too, the, the airport is actually also uh, zoned I-1, and whether it would be possible to zone that I-2 as well. Would it make more sense? There are portions of that property. Obviously, some people feel strongly that should stay in the airport. There are also portions of the property sort of on the back side of that that could be used for other economic development activities that wouldn't adversely affect the airport either. So that would be part of the study that I would propose as well. So if you're willing, I would prepare that either the next meeting or the one after and have that to you to take a look at to see whether you decide to, to consider rezoning of those areas. I think that there are a number of uh, places where people would love to have, and you, you saw, I mean, the number of people that showed up tonight to talk about, there are a lot of different businesses that are up there, no question sure. about it. Sure. And if we could encourage those and encourage more to locate in that area with proper parking and so on, uh, I think that would be a good thing for that area. Mm -hmm. I think it's good to have that, and it's our, our job to make sure they design it properly so it flows better than when those were probably built. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy to do that. Okay. Right. Um, <laughs> status of the Village District project? Yeah. Sure. The Village District study, uh, the we talked uh, Village District study, some of you may have been able to come to a couple of the meetings when we talked about that. The consultant did a pretty, uh, pretty nice job so far is putting together the draft <coughs> of that Village District and should be a uh, ready for giving us the final draft within a week or so. I just emailed him today and wanted to know when it's going to show up. Um, it is the copy of the study and the slides that were shown to the public are all on our website. You want to take a look at that village, Weetog Village District study. You can see where the slides are. Pretty interesting. And some of the development of that whole area from 185 north to Powder Forest Drive is some significant development potential in the future. Obviously, a lot of it has to do with Mitchell's, but there are some other properties in there as well that could be sort of re repurposed in the near future. That whole area could really be brought to life as a kind of a walkable, sustainable area too. So, so they just want to let you know that that's very close to being finished up and hopefully within a week or two we'll have a final draft for you. What I'll probably do as soon as I get that is meet one more time with the uh, consultant um, and then ultimately get a, a sort of a refined final draft to you for consideration as to whether it should be adopted as a, as a zoning regulation or not. We do a public hearing obviously and have everybody participate in that. But that's what we would propose to do there. So. Okay, and marketing project? Marketing project. The uh, consultant uh, submitted his um, uh, most recent work, which is also, on, again, on the town website. Uh, that was shown to uh, the EDC mostly and members at the uh, library, I think, last time. I don't remember the exact date now. Was it two or three weeks ago? And I also emailed him today and asked him when he's going to be ready for his final presentation of that marketing study. That was phase one of the marketing study. And I would like him to come to do that to um, a meeting of the Board of Selectmen, but I wanted to have all the land use commissions know about it and be invited as well. So perhaps if the Board of Selectmen decided that it would be okay to hear that maybe at 6 o'clock when they had a 7 o'clock meeting to, to have it presented to everybody, try to get the EDC, the land use commissions, and the Board of Selectmen perhaps even the Board of Finance to come and, and spend that, that time just hearing about where we are and what the next steps are. So that was the idea for that. So that'll probably be sometime, sometime in October if I can convince the Board of Selectmen to hear it then. Okay. But it's pretty, it's interesting study. I don't know that I'd say that anything in it is earth shaking, but it certainly uh, validates a lot of the, the marketing information that EDC has been talking about for some time. Gives us some directions to go in. So I think that would be pretty helpful to us going forward. And the Hartford land use study, how did that meeting go? This is, uh, I'll tell you, this was seven days, nine to nine, seven days in a row. It was intense. The, um, this, the final presentation for the Hartford land use study is also put up on our website, just put up, I think, end of last week, beginning of this week, um, and was very interesting. Uh, we had a number of people come. Um, I would have liked to see more, but it was, we had probably 60 people come for doing the, the uh, polling on the first, on the Saturday. We had probably 40 or 45 people come to the open house, and we probably had about 60 people come to the, uh, the final presentation as well. The applicant had sort of come up with three different alternatives. And while they sound um, uh, kind of hokey, you know, when you sort of just talk about what's an agriculture eco-village, what is that? Well, there's a whole series of things that that could possibly be. 
a whole health village, which would be, could be anything from um, early childhood education, could be through assisted living, could be a rehab center, could be a sports rehab clinic. There's a whole series of things in each one of those alternatives that it could possibly be as well. Um, so there's, there's three alternatives that are shown on the website. And uh, just take a look at those if you want. Probably in the next month, they'll be back with a framework for the code. We'll do a form-based code for that property. Um, there were some couple of comments that people made on the patch that said, well, we shouldn't, you know, we have to be very careful about what we do to the Hartford's property. Uh, I can assure you that we are extremely con conscious of that. Um, the Hartford has been very close to this whole process. And, and my understanding is that, and they heard the final presentation on um, last Tuesday night, they were, they were very happy with what they had heard. So I think it's, it's headed in the right direction. It's certainly not there. Ideally, we'd like somebody just to come out of the woodwork and say, here's a check for X, yeah. mm. you know, that'd be great. Um, that's realistic. I'm not so sure that that's realistic. So we'll just have to see. But so far, they've been very happy. The potential for the site uh, for actually both parcels, the one where the existing building is plus the north 40 acres, significant amount of development potential there. And our obvious, it, we did an interesting in the polling, the keypad polling. Um, I think it was about... 80% of the people that were there thought the number one problem was, you know, tax base, making sure the tax base doesn't deteriorate. It was very interesting because there was a whole variety of, all the way from high school kids to, to seniors that were there. So it was very interesting. So that and the results of that polling, are, I think, are on that side. So, so the end, re the the end result is going to be a zoning reg. Yes. So any potential new purchaser of that property will have to abide by <coughs> this new reg. The trick here is going to be to design the reg so that it's flexible enough to allow for uses that people might come in with. In order to do this, we have to work very closely with not only the Hartford, but their realtor, so that we know who might be coming in and what they might be looking for. That marketing pro process is going on right now. They're talking to people all over the country, if not internationally, about who might come in here. So before we actually craft a regulation that's going to say these are the uses, the reason that we're using a form-based code is because the structure and the sort of the texture of it is what we're trying to set. The uses can be very flexible. So somebody might come in with, maybe they come in with, say, a, 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 a high-end specialty grocery store as part of it. Maybe some high-end specialty housing. Maybe some affordable housing. Um, one of the proposals talked about preserving about half of that northern 40 acres as open space and, and, and making agriculture uh, a possibility on those sites, deed restricting it to agriculture. One of the things we talked about agriculture is we talked about the possibility of maybe a 75,000 square foot craft brewery as part of this, the situation, as part of the sort of the whole ag eco village thing. And that's, that, there's buildings on that plan that would allow that to happen as well. So whether they could grow some hops there, whether they could grow things there that would, would apply to the craft brewing process, we don't we don't know. Would the so, second would the secondary priority be to have a reg in place if eventually it becomes property of Sim town of Simsbury? Yeah. Um, we we want to have a reg in place that would allow the optimum development of it no matter who owns it. I don't know. I didn't hear anything, Derek, about I'm just curious as to why we would be doing this prior to there being a, a, a potential new property owner. And, you know, uh, I'm, I'm all for having as many tools in the toolbox as possible with regard to somebody coming in with a proposal. But um, I certainly won't want to hamstring a potential new. No, we, have to, we have to make them partners with us as opposed to saying, here's a regulation. No, absolutely. We're really aware of that. And that's why the framework, and, and the people that have done this before have probably done more form-based codes around the country than anybody. Mm -hmm. The reason that we're doing it in, in the way of preparing the framework and just sort of leaving that in place now, saying, okay, if you can live with the framework, we'll put the details later on when, the, when it comes into clearer focus. Mm -hmm. so we're very conscious of that fact, absolutely. Yeah. So Thank you. anyway, exciting process, a little exhausting, but was, I think, um, Hopefully we will. I have two other quick things that, that are not on the agenda, if I can, Jerry. One is, um, you remember, may remember a while ago, uh, the commission approved uh, the sort of the rehabilitation of the McDonald's building. They were going to reside it, and they were going to hmm. rehabilitate inside. I worked really hard with the, uh, the engineer and the applicant on signage. Um, what I finally have come up with and I'll lead you to the bottom line here. The result of the new signage program would be that the only sign being increased or added to 
is a 14 square foot arch sign. Everything else would be <coughs> reduced or remain the same. The net result is a reduction in the amount of signage area by 35 square feet. So I've actually got them to reduce the signage by 35 square feet uh, over what is currently there. The decrease in the amount of signage and that is also internally lit will be reduced. So those are two things that I've been working really hard with. I'd like the commission's ability to go ahead and work with them to, to get this, go ahead and get this approved. They've been working back and forth three or four times now. To me, that we've got them to reduce the amount of signage that was there. The menu boards that are there are going to stay exactly the same size. They're just going to be moved about. Um, and that's, that's basically it. So I just like the commission's approval to go ahead and work with them. Oh, on yeah. that. What's, the, what's the current size of the largest sign on, on the site? Do you know? I'm just picturing 14 by 14, and that's one big M. Is it going to be lit? Yeah. There's an arch. There's an arch. It's called the word mark sign. It's 70. <coughs> that's 70. Point six square feet. The menu boards themselves, there's two of those, 116 square feet. The real, th thank goodness, those are behind the building essentially and pretty mm -hmm. much screened. Mm -hmm. um, those will be relocated slightly with that dual lane that they have, mm -hmm. but still I think hopefully fairly and well. And where screened. would the 14 by 14 M arch sign be? It's going to be in the area. Um, there's one right on the side of the building now on the side of Route 44. Yeah. And yeah. so that's going to be removed and it's going to be reduced from 70 square feet to 40 square feet oh wow so that's pretty good yeah. plus i said any sign that they change or remove they're going to have to put in um, externally lit not internally lit okay you, you, it's got to be inches you're, you're talking Harry. i mean 40 square feet is it 14 square feet no 40 square feet 40 yeah 18 feet four by ten yeah yeah by three it's yeah. Not very sign. big yeah it for doesn't. Route 44. You know, I think it's the scale. scale so yeah. Bigger. Yeah. 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 Okay. So yeah. if, if we're on top of Hoffman sign. <laughs> yeah. So the Hiram, they're never been a problem. No. You know, yeah. you go to their property; it's meticulously yeah. maintained. Mm -hmm. They're they're mm -hmm. very responsive to anything that yeah. the town wants. All right. So I'll go ahead and yeah, do that. Go ahead and work do that. with them administratively. Yeah. 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 We appreciate that. They know they do too. And then the last thing I have, um, and this really wasn't an official matter for the agenda, but I did talk to the other members that aren't here this evening. This is something that the um, Commission has been talking about for a while. It has to do with uh, renaming of um, Mall Way. It had to do with Jim Gallagher. And I wanted to uh, just run this by you. The town has a proposal for naming a town facility. And this was filled out um, and given to me by Ed Pabich last week. Um, the town is pr proposing, as is if the commission recommends to the Board of Selectmen, um, they're proposing to name that, that uh, facility Jim Gallagher Way. Um, and that's basically it. And, uh, the, uh, I think everyone that's not here this evening has said that they would agree with that, although that's not a formal vote, obviously. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to run that by you folks and see if you had any problem with it. If you don't and want to go ahead and say we agree with that, then I can send this to the Board of Selectmen. And where is it again? Mall, Mall, Mall Way. Mall Way? Yeah. They changed the name from Mall Way to? Jim Gallagher Way. Okay. In honor of Jim's, you know, many years. Was it 42? 40, oh, okay. 40, uh, service on the commission um, so if that's acceptable to the commission I just sorry I'm, I have a lot of questions tonight sure. have we talked talk to the the tenants on mall way um, you know there's as far as you know directions to they have a, a mall way address Is letter that cause any letterhead right yeah. <laughs> well what, 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 I mean I, I'm just yeah, do we have to give them notice? Asking questions, Actually, you yeah, know, playing devil's advocate would, on, sure. on the, behalf of the of the, of the uh, tenants on Mulway. I think the Board of Selectmen would have that hearing. Yeah. I think the other thing that's very possible, too, is if people object to that, you know how they do lots of times in the city, they'll have the regular street name, and then below that they'll have, you know, Jimmy Pearsall Boulevard right. or whatever it happens yeah. to be. I mean, how could you object it? I mean, I, I'm just yeah. saying. I'm yeah. thinking maybe there's I some grumpy yeah. or yeah. something. So I think there's a couple of different ways to do it, but I would certainly say that I'm if the Board of Selectmen wants to have a public hearing on it to talk to everybody, I think they should probably do that. Idea. Yeah, so uh, yeah, that's Okay. Good point. All right. Thank you very much. All right, make a motion to adjourn the meeting. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nobody's opposed. <laughs>